So everyone, welcome to the Ohio Statewide Family Engagement Leadership Summit. We are glad that you could join us on this day of professional learning, meant to take family, school, community partnership to the next level. My name is Farah, and I will be the session's moderator. This is session 12, Family Engagement and Middle Schoolers Career Exploration. If you have any questions, concerns, or technical issues, please message me privately in the chat. And to ensure that all get the most out of today, we're asking that all participants turn off your cameras and microphones. If you have questions for the presenters, I believe they are going to open up a Q&A session um, and allow you to ask them as um, needed. But feel free to message me privately. You can also join today's conversation on Twitter by using the hashtag chart new territories to share your thoughts. I'd like to welcome our speakers, Kelly Bussell, Patrick Cunningham, and Kayla Mack as our speakers today. And now I'll turn it over to them. Great, thanks so much, Farah, appreciate it. Hi everyone, welcome to our session on family engagement and middle school career exploration. Um, so we're a group of presenters from various backgrounds, um, but we do share a common interest in this topic. So we're really excited to share what we've been learning. Um, and just to kind of give a little bit of context, Middle Years to Careers, the title that you see there, it's a project that um, from within the Ohio Statewide Family Engagement Center that began with an extensive literature review on middle school career exploration and family engagement. Um, and it's now led to the development of a number of tools and resources for families, um, students, and schools. So we're excited to share what we've been learning. Uh, so my name is Patrick Cunningham. I'm a graduate research assistant with the Ohio, uh, Ohio Statewide Family Engagement Center. I'm a licensed professional school counselor, and I have experience working um, as a school counselor both in the U.S. and internationally. And I am currently a second-year doctoral student in the Counselor Education Program at Ohio State. Good afternoon, I am Kelly Bussell, and I am a Certified Career Services Provider and a Training and Development Specialist at the Center on Education and Training for Employment. Uh, additionally, I bring more than a decade of experience engaging in organizational career development within a variety of human resource roles uh, in both the public and private sector. And hello everyone, I am Kayla Mack and I am an Education Program Specialist in the Office of Graduate Success at the Ohio Department of Education. I lead work around career advising, student success planning, the Ohio Meets Jobs Readiness Seal, and Ohio Meets Jobs K-12 for the Department of Education. Uh, prior to the department, I had the honor of working directly with students as an assessment coordinator and classroom teacher. All right, so we'd love to just take a few minutes to get to know everyone in the room. So if you could um, type in the chat, share a little bit about who you are, um, maybe your current role, and also for fun, we'd love to know about you as a middle schooler. So when you were in middle school, what did you want to be when you grew up? Um, so I'll just share quickly my an example from my life. When I was in middle school, probably around sixth grade or so, I really wanted to be an astronomer. So I'd kind of just like, I was obsessed with telescopes and looking at stars and star charts and all that kind of stuff. That's awesome, Patrick. Are you following the James Webb telescope just out of interest? Uh, that, that interest has completely left me. So I, <laughs> I know nothing anymore about astronomy. That's hilarious. Well, I wanted to be a teacher like Aaron here, um, but that was going to be my full-time career. And then on the side, I really wanted to work at Kmart. Um, as a cashier, so I wanted to use the scanners. All right, thanks for sharing, everyone. Kayla, are you, do you have a career you want to share about? <laughs> I would say in middle school, I was pretty, I was still dedicated as to uh, being committed to being She-Ra when I grew up. So nice. I was kind of embarrassed or being so I was like, roles, and I'm still like, no, I think I was still committed to being She-Ra at that time. I love that. That's awesome. <laughs> All right. Well, welcome everyone. Yes. We, we're seeing you you're typing in the chat. Um, it's great to see both what you currently do and what you thought you might do or what you wanted to do. Um, so just to share, we wanted to go over our goals for today. Um, so our overall goal is to promote effective collaboration around career exploration between middle schools and families. We want to do this by describing the importance of the process or, or career exploration process in middle school. 
Also, we're going to talk about um, the importance of family engagement in this process. We're going to talk about the roles of families in partnerships with schools. Whoops. And we're also going to do, we're going to spend a lot of time together collaborating um, to think and brainstorm together about ways to do this. All right, so we have a variety of folks in the room, it looks like, um, and I'm guessing there's probably a variety of levels of understanding regarding the career development process. Um, so I'm just going to cover that here with a quick review. Uh, the career development process typically follows a model of where we're exposed to work. Um, we start to gain an understanding of what it is, why it exists in our lives, how it exists in our lives. And then we start to shift where we begin to build our self-awareness. Uh, we start to discover what we're good at and what our interests are. Um, and then we start to move where we begin planning. Um, what steps do we need to begin to figure out what is necessary, whether it's through course planning and experiences, such as the jobs that we have in high school, um, pre-apprenticeships or internships. Um, and then that will um, help us work towards achieving our career goals. And so based on where a middle schooler is in their development, researchers agree that this is the best time to be engaging with them in the career exploration phase. Uh, and most importantly, this is where they, they are building their self-awareness. They're learning how to explore careers, but also what does that mean for their individual future opportunities? And then from our research, we found that there's a lot of opportunity uh, to involve middle schoolers and families in the career development process. And then interestingly, I was just in Travis Dorsey's session just a little bit ago, and he showed data on surveys that they had sent out to their districts to ask what each of the buildings are doing related to family engagement around a variety of topics. Uh, and I literally said to myself out loud, wow, um, he showed that 0% were noted to be working in the family engagement space um, around job readiness. So that only further solidified for me the need for our conversation here today. So intentional career development activities are so important for a number of reasons. One of those reasons is because that transition from eighth to ninth grade is one of the most critical times that can affect a youth's graduation achievement. So helping students understand how what they are learning in the classroom ties to the real world is an important component that drives that retention. And career development can support helping students make those direct ties. Another reason for intentional career development is that it helps students begin to build that awareness around things they can be confident in, which in turn, again, contributes to their persistence in school. It also helps begin to expose them to the many careers that exist. So in the United States, the primary resource for occupational data, ONET, um, they have more than 900 occupations listed, and it just continues to grow. And the reality is we are usually only exposed to just a handful of those occupations. Uh, the more exposure and skills around career exploration that we can provide for students, the greater the chance of them finding that sweet spot uh, within their career life. And that will help support their long-term happiness and overall economic stability. And the Office of Graduate Success at the Ohio Department of Education has a wonderful career advising framework within their Career Connections program that aligns perfectly with the career development process uh, that we just reviewed. And so I'll hand that over to Kayla Mack with ODE to speak about the framework. Thank you. Um, and when we think about career advising and the Career Connections framework from a high level, career advising is the establishment of meaningful and intentional advising for students about their post high school and career goals. And that term career connections that many of us are familiar with is Ohio's branding for career development and advising. And we understand that career development and advising is a cyclical process through a student's K-12 experience and beyond. And the Career Connections Framework illustrates the phases of career development as defined as career awareness, exploration, and planning. And the framework is designed to help teachers and school leaders implement grade appropriate activities, lessons, and programming across the K-12 spectrum. And, and that could be within classroom linkages to career fields in their in in-class curriculum, it could be a project-based activity, 
Uh, they can also be found in student planning and exploration through student success plans, uh, the utilization of Ohio's free career exploration tool, Ohio Means Jobs K-12, and, and additionally through career pathway systems, whether academic or through technical courses, and even experiential learning, job shadowing, internships, and pre-apprenticeships are all examples of um, career advising, exploration, and planning. And on the Career Connections page on Ohio Department of Education's website hosts, uh, hosts a um, vast amount of resources that support career connected education and avenues of engagement for students and families, as well as professional learning opportunities for educators. All right, yes, Kayla, there is so much information out there. I highly encourage everyone to go visit um, this website and just start looking at everything they have available, it's great. Um, so as I mentioned, this discovery path that middle schoolers are taking in their development, uh, there are two primary discoveries that they're making as they develop and learn about themselves. And one is their personal level of self-efficacy and the other is self-concept. These both matter a great deal in how career decisions are approached and made. Our self-efficacy helps us set the stage for what we think we can do and how far we can go, which then in turn influences our self-concept. Our sense of self is important and informs our career decision-making throughout the different stages of our lives. We gain knowledge of ourselves through what others tell us, what we discover to come easy, what's more difficult, what we enjoy, and things that we don't enjoy. So the more that we encourage students to explore their natural talents, and interests, they will learn information about themselves that they may not have otherwise been exposed to on their own. And so as I mentioned just a little bit ago, uh, without, in, without formal or intentional career exploration, we usually have a very limited exposure compared to what exists out in the world. And in particular, we're generally or only exposed to those careers that exist within our immediate surroundings and are fed primarily by the expectations of our families. So assessments occur often in helping folks to learn more about themselves. When we think of assessments for helping with career exploration, we most likely think of interest-based inventories. And these are common and these are great. Um, but our interests change over time. So just, just remember these are not stagnant. And it's important to continue to reassess our interests in an ongoing basis. Because as we learn more about the world and about ourselves, our interests change. We heard Patrick, he wanted to be an astronomer. He has no clue the latest on science and stars and space and all that. So that's a really good example. But what also comes to mind for some of us um, when we're talking about assessments um, is what provides us with an analysis of our innate talents or what we, we would prefer to um, describe as aptitudes or call aptitudes. These are the skills that we tend to have a knack for, the things that come easy for us. So for example, some of us can visualize space really well, spaces really well. And then some of us are really great at generating ideas, or maybe we have a great strength in inductive or sequential reasoning, maybe numerical reasoning. Um, I recently heard an analogy of comparing aptitudes to writing with your dominant hand. If you're forced to write with your non-dominant hand, that is far more challenging than writing with your dominant hand. It can be frustrating, exhausting, and so there are many assessments out there that can assist students and families discover those innate talents. But it is worth noting that if aptitudes are utilized as part of the career development process today, they might be self-assessments or self-reported. The research tells us that self-reporting can be a little bit of a slippery slope because self-reporting of our talents, uh, it may lead to either an underestimation or most likely an overestimation of our innate abilities. And this can be a little troublesome because it takes a considerable amount of time to try and figure out what we like and or what our highest levels of self-efficacy are um, within different spaces. So if you underestimate your abilities, you may disregard a career path that you would um, potentially be perfect for. And, or worse, you might become discouraged should you overestimate your abilities and then later find out that you've been writing with your non-dominant hand. Feller and Leard argue that aptitude assessments contribute to leveling the playing field because interests alone are often influenced by your environment. 
So understanding our aptitudes can help us to expand our ideas of opportunities rather than solely the ones presented to us in our immediate surroundings. And then Joan shares that career counseling at an earlier age can help students to over overcome barriers, such as race, gender, or socioeconomic status. So the more objective or scientific approach that is taken to accessibilities can provide a great amount of information and positive results. So in summary, uh, with an increased understanding of self, and as students and families reflect together on a student's talents and how those complement their interests and tie to careers, their ability to make informed decisions about careers in turn supports their decisions when planning future academic courses and experiences leading to post-secondary success. All right, thank you, Kelly, for sharing about, um, just kind of giving us an overview of middle school career exploration. In general, we're gonna shift gears a little bit and we're gonna talk more specifically about family engagement and family influence in this process because there's a really important overlap here. Um, so first and foremost, one major finding in this area is that families are the primary career influence for children. So this means that all those stereotypes about middle schoolers never wanting to hear from their, their parents or their family members, it's actually not quite true, at least for this one specific thing. Um, so this means that families play a huge role in supporting their children through this process, which is, again, alarming because it seems like, as Kelly was just sharing, most schools are not necessarily engaging, intentionally engaging families in this process. Um, so their families' expectations and beliefs shape their child's development in this area and other areas. And that's because career expectations and career beliefs shape conversations around the dinner table and influence subtle behaviors that convey messages both directly and indirectly about careers. And this all contributes to students' formation of their beliefs about themselves, about what they're capable of, and it also shapes their interests. So with that said, familial engagement in career development at home and in school is certainly not uniform across all families, and we know that. Uh, the ways that families choose to engage with their children around this topic, it's influenced by a number of factors. Um, so including, first and foremost, their motivational beliefs or, or the beliefs that they can or should have a role in this area of their child's life. Um, and that's going to change from person to person, from family member to family member. Also, um, it's influenced by their perceptions of invitations for involvement from others. So this means whether or not families feel invited into this space, either by the school or by their, by their students. Also, um, it's shaped by their life context or the various factors in their life, uh, including things like time, resources, energy, stressors. Um, and it's important by understanding all of these factors we can better partner with families to increase partnerships between schools and families to better support middle schoolers as they explore careers. Um, kind of overall, our main point uh, regarding family engagement in this process that we want to leave you with is partnerships between schools, families, and communities, specifically around career exploration, are undervalued and underemphasized, especially considering the important role that families play in this area. And one thing that we really think would help with this is to rethink what family engagement means and what it looks like. And we heard a lot about this in the opening session with Dr. Gorski. A lot of times we're kind of stuck in an old way of thinking about family engagement. We're primarily thinking about how to get more parents to come to the school or show up for events. But now we know that effective family engagement is about interactions that are happening at home between the caregiver and the child in support of their learning or in support of their career development. So the question is, how can schools partner with families to promote this form of effective family engagement around middle school career exploration? So we're gonna kind of dive into that section. We'll be sharing some ideas for different ways to partner um, with families, considering this newer conception of what family engagement means and looks like. So that's kind of what <laughs> we, we wrote a research brief um, and we, we synthesized the research in this area, developed a research brief to discuss specific strategies for building partnerships, including ideas and 
ideas, for opportunities, for engagement with families. Uh, the structure of our brief is based on Joyce Epstein's framework for family engagement, which describes some of the roles that families take on. Um, and it helps to expand our views of what family engagement looks like. And we're shortly gonna move into an activity. Um, so get your keyboards ready and your, your mouses ready, because uh, we're gonna start working together on this. Uh, but we're gonna kind of go through our brief what, one strategy at a time. Um, and we're gonna try to generate ideas for practice based on the recommendations that are in the brief. Before we do that, we just wanted to share a couple of quick things to keep in mind in regards, if you're on the school side regarding funding and ways that you can be uh, actually like enacting these plans within your schools. I was muted, sorry. Um, just wanted to point out and remind people quickly that Perkins 5 is available for folks um, starting in the fifth grade. So with the latest version of this act, this is um, new, before that it was seventh grade. So if you haven't already, I encourage you to watch the video that's being placed in the chat. In particular, the ninth video chapter provides a quick overview of how middle grades are outlined in the, new per in the latest Perkins Act along with two state examples of how they have designed and implemented career exploration in their middle schools. So check it out. All right, another quick reminder is regarding Title I funding. So if, if you're receiving Title I funding, there's a specific area within Title I funding for family engagement, um, and those funds can be applied to the specific area within career exploration. So there's a, a little bit more information. We won't spend too much time on this, but we just wanted to remind you of that. Okay, so we're gonna move into our activity portion of the time together. Um, so again, one by one, we're gonna review each of the important strategies for building partnerships between families and schools around career exploration. We'll also share some ideas and opportunities for what this can look like in practice. And then for each strategy, we'll move as a group, we'll kind of shift over into a Jamboard, which is an online collaborative space where everyone in this room can add sticky notes with their ideas for building these partnerships according to each strategy. Uh, we'll be thinking about strategies for working with individual families, uh, for working with schools as a whole, and also kind of collaborating with the community. Um, and at the end, what we're gonna do is collect all of your responses. We're gonna put that into a PDF document along with the other resources that we're sharing today. And if you want to give us your email, we'll send this to you in an email. So we're gonna, Give you the link right now for the Jamboard. I believe that should be coming in there soon. So you can click on that, maybe get acquainted with it as we begin to review the first strategy here. So oops, our first strategy involves valuing family's role in career development. So this includes understanding the ways that all caregivers establish environments to support their students. And this reminds me of what Dr. Gorski was talking about as well. All families care. And we as a community need to value their role in this process. So it also includes the role of schools and understanding the families within their community. And more specifically regarding career exploration, schools should understand the end value this important role that families play in the career exploration process. We should be seeking ways to partner with families to encourage healthy career-related dialogue at home. Uh, additionally, because not all families have high self-efficacy regarding their ability to have these conversations about careers, schools can help support them by helping them to understand the level of influence they have in this area. Um, so some opportunities, some ideas, include support families understanding for the important role they play. So sh giving messages, sharing that out with families, making sure to emphasize their role in this process, uh, providing families with discussion topics to have at home, encouraging families to support students' career exploration at home, and helping to expose families to careers with tools and resources. And just to reemphasize, the Department of Education has several free resources to share with your families about career awareness and exploration. All right, I think we're going to go ahead and switch over into the Jamboard now. So if you don't mind, again, clicking on that link, um, we're going to switch over there. We're going to share our screen of what the Jamboard looks like, and we're going to walk you through how to use it and how we're going to collaborate in the space. 
Patrick, I dropped in the link to you. I'm not able to share. Oh, all right. Chat. Okay, so I'm going to do that. Just give me one second as I switch the screen here. All right, so this is what it looks like. Can you can you all see it now? Okay, so this is what it looks like. We should be seeing how people are joining. That's great. So what we're going to do is we have some examples in here already, but you're going to be posting ideas on sticky notes. So um, if there's something you're currently doing within your school or school community, current practices that help promote the value of families' role in career development, whether it's working with individuals' families, whether it's at the school level or at the community level, those sticky notes will be in pink. And any future ideas you have, maybe things that aren't happening right now, but you, a light bulb went off and you want to share that idea, you'll put it in blue. So to add a sticky note on this left-hand side, it's this button here that looks like a sticky note, you'll click it. And then you can type something in there and you can change the color to either blue or pink, depending on this kind of sticky note that you want to add. And you click save. Once you do that, you can click out of it. And then you can move it into whichever category it fits in. So if it's individual families, schools, or communities, it'll go into one of those. So start filling in your ideas as we, as you wish. You can also, during this time, feel free to unmute and ask questions or, or engage. We have some ideas in there already. Um, so for an example, with families, maybe a current practice is that you're already in communications and conversations with families. You're really making sure to emphasize their role in the career exploration process. At the school level, an idea would be to emphasize to staff the important role that families play and sharing that at staff meetings or messaging that's happening. At the community level, maybe you ex explore if there are community organizations in your area that are doing a really good job of partnering with schools and then intentionally partnering with those programs and, and learning from them about how they are emphasizing families' roles. So feel free to take some time, go ahead and add some, some notes in here. We'll, we'll be in here for a few minutes. So Love to see if you have questions on how to use it. Again, feel free to unmute and just ask. Looks like some sticky notes are popping in here already. Yeah, Patrick, I have a question from Christy Veen who has to leave early. I'm not sure if she's still with us, but um, she asked, which tools are recommended that measure aptitude for middle school students? Kelly can share that one pretty well. I thought she might like it. <laughs> Well, there's a lot. I think the most popular, it's, um, it, and many of you probably have heard of it, is there is a high school version of ASVAB. Um, I don't believe that they are at the middle school level, but, um, or at least approved. I'd have to double check on that. Um, that is free. And then there are the self-reported ones. Again, just being thoughtful about what, what's being stated in the self-report. Um, we can provide a list of those links um, to some free resources um, within the PDF that we send out to anyone who's interested after the session. Um, and then there's others that you can pay for. Um, and you can pay for on an individual basis or um, have get like a site license for your school. So some schools offer this sort of thing and some don't. So I would encourage um, checking with your school's career um, readiness person to find out what are they using and see what might already be available um, for students. Great. Thank you, Kelly. I have a question from Melissa Salazzo. Does Ohio allow Perkins money to be spent on grades five and six? So I'm not aware of any um, differentiation by state. I know that Perkins five was designed and actually has some requirements outlined um, for middle schoolers to be engaged in the process and um, what that looks like. So I encourage you to go to that video um, and review. They do a really nice, simple job of outlining how fifth and sixth grade or fifth through seventh graders um, or fifth through eighth graders, sorry, um, are to, um, to be involved in the career exploration process. So uh, for the sake of time, um, I'm just going to, say first and foremost thank you so much for filling this in so far this is great really really great ideas we'll take some more time to highlight some things as we go but i'm going to move to the next strategy because there are six of these to get through and i want to make sure we've got enough time for all of them so i'm going to switch back to the presentation 
we'll move on to strategy number two. So go ahead, Kelly, and take it away. So the second strategy emphasizes um, communication between families and schools. And so reciprocal two-way communication, we all know this, this is how trust is built between schools and families. I've heard it often today in the different sections. Um, so two-way communication is vital to homeschool partnership practices because families are a valuable source of information regarding their students, their family, and their community. So it's also critical that families have an opportunity to have their questions and concerns addressed by schools. They also need timely, accurate, useful information from their child's school. Again, this is how trust is built, two-way communication, sharing and providing information from the school side, but also hearing and valuing the expertise the family holds. So a few strategies um, that schools can use are asking families for their feedback regarding career-related communication uh, and practices. Sharing information about the software and assessments being used um, in other related resources and making them consumable, letting them know how they can be involved. Highlighting and sharing with families who the career contact is at your school. If you're a parent of a middle schooler, I would love to ask you, do you know who your career contact is for your school? Uh, just would be curious. Uh, we know from the middle school research that um, the transition from elementary to middle school can be really challenging for families. They move from um, an environment where they might have one or two primary contacts in the school to now having multiple and just trying to keep track of who to go to for what. Um, so introducing them to who that career person is in your school um, and let them know that they are the go-to person for questions regarding career-related information um, within your school is a, is a really great idea. And like for many of these strategies, creating toolkits and resources for families to make information readily accessible. All right, Patrick, do you mind navigating back to the Jamboard and we'll focus on um, viewing families as collaborative communicators. So in order to move to strategy two, at the top here, um, it, it says like a slide now, we have to click the button to go to the next frame. So to add strategies into, into strategy number two or ideas into strategy number two, you need to click over into strategy two, the next frame. And you can start placing your ideas to view families as collaborative communicators in this one. I love that idea, asking families about how they learned about careers. I like that too. I'm gonna add one in here. So it's not just you all doing all of the work. Great idea, making sure that all of the communication is accessible and, and readable. That's a great idea. I think too, again, in, in this, one thing to really emphasize with this strategy in particular is focusing on uh, making sure that families have the same voice, um, you know, as the school, right? So they're on the same level playing field. The communication between both parties is happening at an equal level. So keep that in mind as you're thinking about these ideas. Looks like we've got a few more coming in here. Offer UDL and communication, video clips. Yep, that's great. Have families complete the career path for their own career. Yeah, 
celebrate families, careers. That's great. So again, we're going to switch back in, but feel free to keep dropping in ideas as, as we're going. We're going to switch back to the presentation so we can go on to the next strategy. So the next key has to do with the role of families as volunteers. Um, but volunteering, I think a lot of times is viewed as families coming into the school building. But what we're trying to sh make sure we emphasize again, volunteering includes any time or anywhere a family member supports students learning or behavior um, or supports the school's goals overall. So in the school's career development program, there are many ways that schools and families can partner together through volunteerism. Um, and again, this is not gonna be all families. Not all families are gonna wanna engage as volunteers, but a lot will, especially if we're thinking about unique and unique opportunities for, for engagement in this area. So especially because school counselors have so many responsibilities um, in their jobs, partnering with families to deliver the career programming can really help um, take some of the burden off. And families bring a wealth of knowledge and experiences, not only about their own occupation, but about their career development, the way that they move from school to their careers. So again, really leveraging their, their expertise and their experiences can help the program overall. Um, so some opportunities include surveying families to find out how they'd like to be involved in career-related activities, requesting families provide job shadowing opportunities, um, also inviting families to teach employability skills or technical skills within their area of expertise. You could also solicit families to be career mentors for students or invite families to virtual and in-person events to learn more about um, careers and courses. And just to add on to what has been shared, um, work-based learning also creates opportunities for families to have a deeper connection to career exploration by helping coordinate experiences that provide students with real-world real world learning through partnerships with local business and industry um, or within the, the parent or family's uh, place of work. And uh, also when we think about those mentoring spaces and those professional skills, the Ohio Meets Jobs Readiness Seal is a formal designation students can earn on their high school diplomas and transcripts that indicate that students have the personal strength, strong work ethic, and professional experiences that businesses need and post-secondary institutions value. And in middle school, educators can use the Ohio Meets Jobs Readiness Seal rubric to build understanding and awareness of those professional skills outlined in the Ohio Meets Jobs Readiness Seal, and families can help reinforce students' understanding as well as practice those skills to help prepare students to pursue the seal in high school. And also, when we're thinking about those community components, the Ohio After School Network is a community-based pipeline for educators to elevate partnerships across education and families, and um, Ohio, the Ohio After School Network provides resources for programs as well as families and is composed of diverse stakeholders in education, after school, out of school time, summer, and youth programs. And I know at this point we are going to transition back to our Jamboard to reflect on this strategy. Thanks, Kayla. Mm -hmm. um, so I, I've got the Jamboard up again. Again, just remember you have to click on the next slide to go over to strategy three. So again, start sharing some ideas. What are ways, some unique ways to volunteer? You can incorporate families that want to volunteer their time or their energy into this process, either working with individual families, the community level, at the school level. What are some practices or, or ideas for the future? Yeah, so one, one great idea is inviting families to be career mentors. And that, I think that's a great opportunity because that's not something that has to happen at, within the school building. It can be, you know, in their own time. Now Zoom really opens up a lot of options for, for those sorts of communications. They can email back and forth. They can do job shadowing. And again, I think with this strategy, especially it's important to emphasize not all families are gonna wanna volunteer their time in this way, but there are gonna be opportunities for some families that really wanna join in, in this specific role as a volunteer.
Yeah, short video clip series with brief interviews. I love that idea. So it's like a like a human library almost with with family sharing. That's a, that's an awesome way to volunteer because that doesn't take much time. Five minutes uh, of their time, and 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 there they are as a volunteer. It's a great idea. Connect with after school programs. Yep. To build career exploration opportunities for for students. I see a little star. That's great. Looks like there's also some challenges maybe navigating the Jamboard. <laughs> Things are kind of hiding, uh, highlighting up. That was a, a fear we had was that things were going to get all, all moved around a ton. But, it, you know, if you're having a hard time, that's okay. Uh, you can also type some ideas into the chat and we can post them if that's easier as well. You can just flag maybe like if it's a current idea or a future practice. All right, I think, again, we should probably move back into the uh, to the slides. But once again, if you're having a hard time putting stuff in the in the uh, Jamboard, just let us know in the chat and we can put it in there for you. Okay, so we are on strategy four, right? Okay. So as we mentioned first thing, students value the expectations and aspirations that their families have on their future career goals. So the four strategies around encouraging families in career-related learning at home. Uh, when students perceive their family support, supports their career exploration and their goals, the more positive experience they will have within their career development. So with the level of trust students place in their families as a source of career-related information, it's important that families are empowered to support career-related learning and exploration at home. The exchanges at home can be structured and formal or not structured and not formal. Also, we mentioned earlier, there's a large scale of knowledge and understanding among families and how they can support their child's career exploration. Uh, but some may benefit from um, a more specific and structured activity or guidance around this topic and what they can do at home but others may do fine with something a little more broad um, in guidance or lighter conversation starters. Um, so for example, um, in the chat, there will be a drop to our middle years to careers page where we have just that, some conversation starters for families that you can share with families or um, if you have middle schoolers, hopefully engage with them on your own. Um, we're also so working Kelly, to- Sorry, really yeah. quickly, we lost our moderator, so we lost the links. But oh, I, I got it. No but worries. Again, we'll we'll be sure yeah. to share all of these in that document after. So we'll collect your email addresses and we'll share all these resources. Got it. Yes. All right. So that'll be coming. Um, all right. We're all. I was going to tell you too. We're working on a more detailed and structured activity as well, um, just to hopefully get at everybody's, um, I guess, level of of desire within these activities. So whether you want something more structured and detailed. That's coming soon. Um, otherwise, we have the current conversation starters. All right, so some other opportunities um, for schools might be expressing the importance of family engagement in the career exploration uh, process, sharing with families about career-related activities that are taking place in school and provide them with information on follow-up activities that they might um, do at home, sending home guides for them. Again, we keep going back to tools and resources. Um, and making those sort of off the shelf for parents and families. Um, and then referring families to the Ohio Department of Education Career Connections website to explore career pathways. We mentioned it earlier, there is a ton of information in Career Connections website um, with a lot of really great stuff for schools, families, and students. So again, we'll provide that in the document uh, that we send out after our session. And to piggyback on yeah. what was shared, um, parents can use the Ohio Mage Jobs uh, K-12. It is a free tool. Um, when we think about those, the, the part of the strategy around um, helping students understand and, and parents do that exploration around assessments and self-assessments, students can take an interest survey for free um, through the Ohio Mage Jobs K-12 profile and discuss those results with their parent and family and um, ohamesjobs.com provides middle grade students with various avenues to learn and explore their career interests and develop meaningful academic and career plans for high school and beyond. Thanks, Kayla. 
So I, I pulled up the uh, strategy four on the Jamboard. It's got these last three strategies. Thank you all for your engagement in this. I know uh, there are some technical issues um, to work through, but we, we love getting your ideas and your and current practices. I also realize there are some parents of middle schoolers in the room too. And I think this, this would be a really unique strategy for parents to like put on your parenting lens and think about how you would want to interact with your child. Because again, that's going to look different for every parent. Like not every parent's going to want to go to the school all the time. And I think also there's differences even within the home. Some might want to like sit down and work through an activity with their child. Some might just want to have more broad open conversations. So from your parenting lens of a, as a middle school parent, what are ways that you would want schools to um, help promote your work with your child at home in this area or not work, but activities you're doing or the conversations you're having with your child. So feel free to share those ideas as well. I like so that. we've got and some then, ideas in here. Yeah, job diagrams. Go ahead, what, Kelly. I'm sorry. One of the things so that just prompted in my head is on the Career Connections website and the Career Pathway documents that they have at graphics. It does a really good job of, so the example I always use in conversation with Patrick on this is a nurse. There's so many different levels of being a nurse. There's a lot of different ways to go about becoming a nurse. Um, you can start out doing STNA, working towards that, um, maybe you get off the ramp at LPN and then decide to get back on and pursue a BSN. So there's just so many different ways. And so I love this job diagram thing because it does really allow you to think through all the possible, at least a lot of the possibilities um, that are available. Take home box. It's a great idea. Awesome. I also see schools who are creating, oh gosh, I can't think of where it was recently. Is it Cincinnati? Where they're creating a space where they come in and it's like this market and all the students can work in these markets and understand like all the different operations um, within it. And that reminds me of that as having conversations with the students about their experiences um, related to those activities at school. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and navigate back over again, make sure we have enough time for all of these. All right, so the next strategy has to do with family members as decision makers. And, and like the volunteer role, um, there's, you know, this role, this decision maker role, not all families are gonna wanna engage in the same way in this role. Um, so these actions as decision makers support family engagement with students' education by partnering with schools to guide decisions regarding curriculum program or programming, other school-related matters. Uh, so this form of engagement is most successful when families are actively invited by school personnel to participate in making decisions. Uh, so with middle school career development, families should be actively involved in curriculum planning or other important programmatic decisions. It shouldn't just be all coming from the school. They should be having families that are part of making decisions on what, you know, what are we sharing with students and what ways are we, how are we doing these activities with them? How are we engaging other families? Um, oops. So some ideas for, or some opportunities. Uh, first and foremost, recruit families to participate in career planning, uh, program programming. Um, also establish a standing schedule for meeting with families on career-related topics. Uh, you could maybe solicit feedback from families regarding the effectiveness of current practices um, and also trying to make sure that meetings for course selection or things like that are conducted in a way that all families can access. And from a state lens, uh, student success plans are a legislatively required uh, mandate for students starting in sixth grade who are deemed at risk of dropping out of school. However, it is something encouraged that all students have. Um, a student success, having a student success plan or a personalized plan provides students a better understanding of their achievement potential and creates opportunity to ensure needed supports and services are put in place for 
each student to succeed. And student success plans provide guidance in early planning of future goals. And we learned a lot today about the significance of that early planning, as well as graduation pathway options and career awareness and exploration and planning. And families play a vital role in the establishment and monitoring of student success plans. And per legislation, families are required to be notified and included in the development and monitoring of these plans. And now we will switch back over to our Jamboard to reflect on this strategy. All right, so here we are in strategy five. So any ideas of ways that at the family level, school level, community level, that you can collaborate with families as decision makers? Patrick, so there's one on strategy three that um, caught my eye and it, it works great there, but I'm thinking it would also work great here is it said something about inviting parents to basically design the curriculum and run with it. So that, that could work here. Yeah. I see a few others popping in here. Encourage families to invite and bring other families with them, advisory board members. I think and that's I, huge. And I will emphasize too, uh, around the development of career advising policies and plans, uh, something at the state level we're trying to push is more diverse and inclusive stakeholder groups in the development and design of those career advising plans and policies, and that being inclusive of um, the parent stakeholder group. So uh, I love that idea. And just to kind of reemphasize that um, we're, we're trying to help support districts in, in creating space for those inclusive stakeholders. And again, for me, um, some of the, the main things that come to mind in this one is it's just making sure that that you're not, as a school, I mean, for me, as a school counselor, it's easy for me with the rest of my team to just try to make decisions about, like, these are the career assessments we're going to do, this is the way we're going to do it. But, you know, really making sure to involve families in, uh, like, invite them into that space so that they can be a part of the decision-making process. All right, so there's a few more trickling in here. I really do want, I'm gonna, I'm sorry that we're rushing through these. I just wanna make sure we've got time for the last one and, and a little bit of time for questions. So uh, I'm gonna switch back over and we'll share the last strategy. So the last strategy highlights the importance of collaboration with the community. Uh, so community in this context refers to any member of the larger community that is interested in or impacted by the quality of education. So families build partnerships with many stakeholders in their community um, who can provide supports to students. And the National Network of Community Partnerships actually shares some great ideas on how schools can make these connections in their shared goal of student success. Um, pop, got that link here, I'll pop it in. And so this is just another example for where the work-based learning comes into play, um, which Kayla mentioned earlier. Um, this is, I had all my links in here, so that might work out okay. Um, so this is just another great resource for developing and implementing a work-based learning program. It's a, it's a manual, more or less. Um, schools can help to facilitate these partnerships between families and community partners by establishing their own connections and providing families with relevant contacts within the community, um, which this can be a difficult task. Uh, it takes, it's difficult to coordinate and a lot of time, and, um, but creating those relationships um, is of a huge benefit and it can be quite significant for students. So some other opportunities schools can use might be um, actually inviting businesses to make school visits or to offer job shadowing experiences or summer skill camps. We hear about coding camps, welding camps, culinary camps, all sorts of experiences that students can have. Uh, inviting the area career and technical educators to connect with students through field trips so that that student can go see on-site labs um, that they can begin to think about um, related to the programs that they offer as they begin to start thinking about what's their plan for high school, what courses am I going to take, um, learn about organizations that are hiring from their programs and learn of potential pre-apprenticeships or internships um, and how do they go about preparing for those. Connect families with other families and connect them with 
after school programs, as Kayla also mentioned earlier. Um, that link was in there for the Ohio After School Network. Um, they, they just, they can be a great resource related to career related experiences. All right, so I will let Patrick wrap things up. I am so thankful that you joined us today and hope you walk away with some information that can support increasing middle schooler career exploration and engagement with their families in your schools. And I hope you enjoy the rest of the summit. All right, so I've got the last slide up here. Um, so again, feel free to add some ideas into that space as well. Ways to collaborate with the community or to promote collaboration with the community. If you're working with families, how can you, are there resources that you can share with them uh, at the school level? Are there ways that your school can partner with community organizations, community members in, in this career exploration space? Um, so go ahead and fill in those ideas as well. I think just kind of based on time, I'm gonna move just kind of through these last slides. So I wanna make sure that we get all of the information and the next, the next thing in here is collecting your email addresses. So again, thank you for collaborating with us today. We'd love to be able to send the results of the Jamboard to you all in a PDF. And also all of these links and resources that we've been sharing, we'll combine it into one document and we'll email it to you. So if that's something that you'd like to receive, please put your email address in the chat. We'll record that. We'll send out it. We'll send everything out together. Um, we also wanted to remind you of certain resources that we have. So where can you go to continue to learn about this? Uh, you can read our full research brief, um, as well as you can gain lots of other resources as we continue to put them out. We're still finishing some resources. Um, so if you want to learn more about our research or access these tools, you can go to our website. We will find the full research brief, other information. You can also be on the lookout for activity guides that we're developing for schools, for families, and for students. So there's going to be one even just specifically for students, and it's all focused on collaboration between schools, families, and students. Um, and then also our center releases a monthly newsletter, um, and it's called our News and Guidance. And the October edition of that is going to actually be on career exploration in middle school. So please be sure you can click on the link there and you can subscribe to our, our monthly newsletter and you can learn more that way as well. All right, and we got like just a couple of minutes left. So if you have any lingering questions, please feel free to unmute and, and ask us anything that you anything you have. Uh, this was a really great session. I'm from the Cincinnati Public School area, and my son attends a career tech school uh, for the arts, and it's very difficult to get the, <clears throat> of course, any apprenticeships or anything uh, that is offered to everyone to apply for. I'm currently looking for a summer pre um, apprenticeship for my son because he's a musician, but yet yeah, he's interested in the, the back end, you know, the sound design and all that. So really looking for a summer program and I'm hoping that these links that will be sent to me that I'll be able to help navigate um, along with approaching the school. Um, but sometimes the challenges you have, you have the opportunities, but they pick who they specifically think will be the best uh, candidate. And um I just want the opportunity for my son to choose. So again, this was a great meeting. I was referred to by the family engagement to come to this meeting. And uh, I'm glad I was able to come. So I'll be looking for that information. Thanks. Uh, thank you, Sharon. That's awesome. I'm going to, I'm going to look into that. Um, Ohio Apprentice has great um, resources and references to all the very, I don't remember how many, there's a ton of apprenticeship programs in the state of Ohio for almost any occupation you can think of. So I'll see what I can find for you and I'll, I'll at the very least get you a reference to the Ohio Furnace website. You okay, your son. Uh, <laughs> yes, he's 12 and he's budding and he's in the nice. seventh grade this year. So he's not quite at the point of where he can work, you know, at 14, but at the same moment, he is at the age where he can be a part of some um, summer camps or something to lead him into that frame so then it's not wasting time and building 
career yeah. and character and opportunities because he is a go-getter. We just Love need it. to do it for him to go get it. Thank you awesome. again. You're welcome. Thank you. All right. Thank you so much, everyone. I need to jump off to go to my next session that I'm going to be helping to run, uh, but we're going to close up the session now. Since uh, Farah had some technical issues, I'm going to close out the session for us. Okay. So I want to thank uh, our wonderful presenters today. Let's give them some Zoom love in the chat. And if this is your last session of the day, then this is the time to complete the survey and I'm putting in the chat now. Um, if you're going to attend more sessions, do not do the survey yet. Do it when you're finished. And um, as a reminder, you can continue here to see the other things we have going on for the rest of the day. And that uh, the next session start at 2.15. So thank you, everyone. We'll see you later.